Okay, so I was asked, is it possible to have multiple of the same object, say the gem, in the room, and that rather than having to write the word out multiple times, you just have a counter next to the word. So say there's three gems, it would read gem x3, you click on a gem, it becomes gem x2, click on the gem, it becomes gem x1. So as you find the gems, they would decrease and there'd be a counter. Yes, you absolutely can do that. So let's take one of our images that we used for something else. Let's take the orb and we'll rename it ball. So we'll click on it and we'll do a couple things. First, let's change its size. Now it's important that when you change the size, you're changing the size of the object, not the asset. So if you click down here and change the ratio, the pixels per unit, you would change this one too. And we don't want to do that. We only want to shrink this new one. So let's just scale it like uh, 0 0.6. 0 0.6. I just don't want it to be too big on the screen. Change it to 0.4 click on color and let's make this one say a bluish color copy that paste it get rid of the append appended parentheses and number so they have exactly the same name that's going to be important and one more time so now there's three you could do four five whatever you want now let's separate them Actually, this size, they kind of look like bowling balls, but that's fine. Now, we will make this one red. And we'll make this one, say, yellow. Yeah, we'll go with the green. Now, we have to do the same thing to these clickable objects as we did the others. So, highlight all three. Add component, physics 2D, and do circle collider 2D. So a circle collider will appear around each one of them. The circle is kind of big, so let's click on edit collider and just sh shrink those in. Again, again. Now we also have to add Physics 2D. And actually, no, we don't need a rigid body. I'm sorry. We're not going to be, uh, they're not going to move. So just the Circle Collider 2D will suffice. Put a check next to is Trigger. Now as a quick recap of what we did in the previous video, to make the objects be clickable, we attach the Click Control Script. In the Click Control Script, we link the corresponding name, so the text object, which is going to be key. We link the name of the object, the, loca uh, the name of the text object, the location of the text object. And what we did down here is this is what actually checks for the click. Right now, when you click on an object that this script is attached to, it destroys the game object and it destroys the object name text. That's what we have to change because since there's three of them, we don't want to destroy the name of the object. We well, at least not until all three have been found. So, we're going to create a new object text. So let's just copy one of the pre-existing ones, and we'll just call it object text ball. So go ahead, click on the three balls, and go ahead and drag and drop the click control script onto it. So now, they, uh, all three objects now have a variable for the object name text, object name position. So, uh, 
object name text object name position successful success click oh that's the um, sparkle so we want to let's see what one of the other objects use success click yep is sparkle so we'll highlight them we'll put sparkle there okay so now they should be clickable what's going to be different here is we are going to attach a variable because these do not have a variable it's just one and done you click on the corresponding object and then the text just destroys it uh, uh, the text gets destroyed both the object and the text get destroyed that's why it's important that when you're clicking on your object you're linking it to the proper text object so they both get destroyed so what we're going to do is we need to track how many of the object there is so since even though it's the same script it's attached to three objects so we're going to have to use a static variable or else um, we're going to have three variables and we don't want them we want just one so in the click control script let's add public static int remain balls equals zero oh, excuse me three we start with three so we can save that and now what happens is when you are um, when you instantiate text okay like these all have these all text objects just have a word put in you can actually change this in C sharp okay so we need to modify this because right now if the object that the script is attached to is clicked on it gets destroyed we want to do a check before we do that so if so if and we have that new uh, variable if if let's see if game object dot name so that's the name of whatever the script is attached to so if game object dot name is equal to ball like I said it matters that that over here they have exactly the same name because you're going to check for it right here so if game object dot name equals ball So game object dot name is equal to ball. If that's the case, then we want remain remain balls minus equals one. Okay. And now we need to change the text of this linked object text. So we called it object name text. So object OBJ name. Hmm, for some reason, it doesn't like it. Maybe I haven't saved it yet, but uh, OBJ name text. 
obj name text dot get component text mesh dot text okay so we have the object clicked on the text object so we're saying when we want a component well these are all called components okay the transform component the mesh renderer component the text mesh component so it says uh, get component which one will we want the text mesh component what are we going to change we're going to change text okay so is equal to balls and then the and sign because you're going to create what's known as a concatenated value you're going to combine multiple objects it's not addition because you're not it's not it's not um, a calculation you're just lining these characters up so balls plus well, actually let's put an x in there because we said we want to say x2 x3 x4 so ball space x plus and now we're going to use that new variable we created and that is remain balls okay so what this is saying so this script is attached to all the clickable objects what it's doing now is it's saying if the name of the object you just clicked on is ball we need to remove re reduce the amount of um, that value down by one and now we want to change the text of this object to reflect both the name and to and a quantity so that's new I don't think we did that previously in uh, this exercise so what we're going to do now so we're going to change this because it shouldn't be gem. It should be balls time three. Now size is too big, so we'd probably have to tweak the spacing or tweak the font. But that should work. Might have to move them to. Nope, they're fine. Thought uh, might have to move them the order and the level but looks like they're fine so let's see if this works let's click on one times two times one times zero so at zero we don't want that to happen we want it to actually disappear at that point so we now modify this we said well if the name is ball but we want more than that if the name is ball and remain balls is greater than zero. Let me zoom in a little bit. So now what we're doing is, okay, so this script is attached to all the clickable objects. Let's get rid of that. That's old from the previous lesson. So before it just went ahead and destroyed the object and the corresponding name. Now, before it does anything, it says, okay, what's the name of the object that's being clicked on? Oh, and by the way, how many balls are left? Or at least, what's the value of that variable? And if this is greater than zero, then this is reduced by one. And the text of the, of the um, text object, the corresponding text object, is changed. So now what happens is you won't see times zero. At that point, it will get destroyed. But we need to do something else too. We still need to destroy the game object that we're clicking on. So we don't want to destroy the text until it's below one, but we still want to destroy the game object. something I 
Okay. So just had to change that if it's greater than one. Okay. All right. So that should do it. That should answer the question. So the question was how to um, have a counter next to the text and that regardless of which of multiple objects you click on instead of destroying the text it reduces a counter next to the text and so basically it's just this you just check in the name of the object so you have to make sure that whatever object is repeated has the same name and we just added a variable and it has to be a static variable and then you just change the actual text so these other ones the text is fixed it's a constant in this one it's a variable so that should do it uh, any other questions just let me know